and we're back live here at the Oliver Wyman Health Innovation Summit. Hi everyone, my name is Kate Warnock and we're here at the Geibel Insights Lounge with our next guest. This is Dr. Griffin Myers. Dr. Myers, welcome to the interview. Sure, thanks for having me. We're happy to have you. You are the founder and chief medical officer for Oak Street Health. So Griffin, in reviewing the, your company, um, you seem to have cracked the code on providing affordable, patient-centric care to low-income seniors. Tell us more about Oak Street Health's business model. Sure. Um, the way you phrased that question suggested I did it, but I would give credit to a, to a team who, who provides that care. Um, you know, for us, a traditional model is a fee-for-service model, and I, my suspicion is if folks are watching this, they know what that means, but it's, it's the way the rest of the economy works. A physician does service, patient pays fee, and it creates a strange incentive to want to do more services, regardless of the value of those services. And so, um, for us, um, we saw a problem um, from a bunch of different angles, particularly for low-income older adults. Um, I'm, I'm an emergency physician by training, so my experience of that was seeing the same people over and over again in the hospital, um, not for acute conditions but for exacerbations in chronic disease. And so that means that the reason that they're there is not because um, they want to be there, it's because we don't have a structure in place to provide that level of support. So what we decided to do was try to build a model where um, we could invest in primary care, keep people well, we, we say happy, healthy, and out of the hospital. And, and because hospitalizations are so frequent and so expensive in the low-income population, um, we can... We can keep people out of the hospital, not have to spend that money, and create, capture those savings and invest them back in the model. Um, this, is, this is what we call a value-based model. There's a bunch of different terms for it, but our business model is really just that. We, we work in neighborhoods where there are lots of older adults, typically of low income, typically with lots of chronic disease. Um, they don't often have great access to primary care, and so they get most of their services in a reactionary way in the hospital. Um, we build and operate physical clinics with physical doctors and nurses and great teams that take care of people, so this is not an app on the App Store. Um, it is, it is a, a network of primary care clinics um, with the greatest folks that I've ever worked with who invest their time and energy in, in prevention. And what we've seen is um, we've been able to move the needle, not a little, but a lot, in keeping people out of the hospital. That creates the savings, and that's the wheel as it turns. Um, keep people out of the hospital, create those savings, capture those savings, invest them in better primary care, reduce more hospitalizations, and got that's it, how it works. Got it, got well, it. You know, here at the summit, um, we had attendees who were able to take an immersion tour, and your, your Oak Street centers yeah. were were, were part of or clinics were, yeah. were part of that tour. What were some of the feedback that you got from the attendees here? Yeah, um, so lots of emails since, lots of folks in the moment giving us feedback. I think there are three things when you're in the space that makes it different. Um, number one, it's a community-based practice. Number two, um, it's team-based. And number three, it's really patient-centered, and I can talk about what those three things mean. Um, community-based means we're, we're not um, in a hospital. We're, we're in a neighborhood community, cent in c community um, practice. Um, the Bronzeville Clinic where we were used to be a grocery store. It had been empty for 10 years, but um, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's in that community. And then also, we, in addition to being neighborhood-based, the first third of the building is a community center. Um, it, if you walk into our clinic, many people don't know that you're in a clinic because that space is a community center, meaning it's open to the community and there are events um, all day long, every day, and some of them are serious events, having a, a urologist come give a talk on prostate cancer screening for men in the neighborhood. Um, others are fun events like speed dating for seniors and bingo. Um, <laughs> but what that is, and, and there are people who are there every day and it's become their place to go and instead of going to the McDonald's on Cottage Grove um, they they go hang out in the Oak Street Clinic and what that does is lower the bar and the fear associated with right. going to the doctor and right. makes it very community based um, the second thing I said is team based and when you come into the clinic um, again it, it is a big open space and there's nowhere to hide people often say two things number one it looks more like an emergency department than than a clinic and that's not that's not my influence that's because you want those open spaces where people can collaborate and move around as a team. Um, the other thing is when physicians come visit, they often ask, where's the physician's office? And we don't do that. Um, we, we have some semi-private charting area, but um, again, what, what we wanted to do was encourage team-based care. And it's we, we still have um, an incredible amount of respect culturally for our physicians and our providers and the skill that they have, um, but we don't have a protected space where they can hide because you want teams to be able to move around with each other. And then the last thing is patient-centered, and I think a lot of people say that's one of my favorite buzzwords because it ultimately is meaningless if you say it enough, but um, we, we seriously try to make 
patients' problems our problems, and it's harder on our teams. I believe very seriously that being a provider at Oak Street is harder than elsewhere because we've assumed a lot of what is typically layered on for the patient to solve to ourselves, and it's incredibly rewarding, but it just speaks to the quality of our teams. Absolutely, you know, so I, as a couple things, <clears throat> as you were going through those, uh, the, those three different uh, responses, you know, I strongly encourage anybody to visit your website because oh, yeah. you have patient testimonials that are just, I, boy, if they don't sell it, I don't know what would, um, and, and uh, that's one thing. Uh, another is the calendar of events, so as you yeah. said, it's a community center, and so there might be a knitting class, there could be a dance, there could be a movie night, you know, that sort of thing, so I love seeing that. But I also wonder, um, you know, as far as hiring those physicians yeah. who are maybe used to a more traditional setting, is it a challenge or are you finding people that are really, this is so resonating with them that yeah. they're coming to you? Um, you? You know, so that's a good question. And I will tell you, when we started, um, I, had, I, I did not anticipate this to be a challenge, but you hear a lot, there's a shortage of primary care doctors. Um, and that because of that fee-for-service milieu, that, that you, you've had people deviate away from primary care into other specialties. Um, what I would say is that um, we have an, an elite team, a very diverse team in very many ways, um, but the one thing they have in common is they believe in this mission. And the exciting thing for, for me here is that we have, I'm, it is probably the, the second most humbling part of this work. Um, the first most humbling is that our patients trust us with their care. The second most humbling is that um, these physicians and, and nurse practitioners who provide care and lead our care teams, um, many of them are way smarter than I am, have trusted us and this model as, as a, a place for their practice. Um, it did initially, it was very hard to attract yeah. elite talent. Um, now as we've developed a reputation for being the place where you're going to get very, very sick, but lovely and incredibly deserving people who, who you get to provide care for, um, that has been a big selling point. The fact that because of this value-based model, we invest time and energy and resources not in in getting a CPT code, right. um, but right. in getting a health outcome at the right. end. And that the docs have visibility into what that is. I, I mean, I think the thing for me, and, and uh, you know, my 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 founding colleagues tell me often not to say this, but you know, my biggest complaints, I miss that opportunity to be at the bedside with patients, um, and and that's something that. Um, you know, I, I see that joy come back in the work that our providers do. And, and I do not want to say that it's easy. Like, I already admitted, I think it's harder. Um, and, and they have hard patients to work with. Um, and it's way bigger than just making medical decisions because there's social context and cultural context and poverty and disparities. Um, but by doing the incredible work they do, that's what we address. And so, again, I get to say the words here. Uh, they do the work. Well, you know, I think there's a reason why you were you were a tour for the summit. As Terry Stone uh, opened uh, the summit this morning, and she was talking about her own consumer experience, but really kind of addressing all the challenges that we face in the health industry. It includes those things that Oak Street Health is really tackling. It's the social determinants of health. It's the care teams. It's the time and the attention that we really want to put on the consumer at, as the center of, of our care delivery. Yeah. So kudos to you for, for being highlighted <laughs> that way. To the team, way. yeah, for sure. Yes, for sure. One final question yeah. for you, Griffin. What has you most excited about how the health industry is transforming from the outside in? Um, I, I cheated, obviously, because I saw a couple of these questions. I will tell you, I, I don't read it as an outside in. I, I very much feel like this is an inside out. And and I, no, I don't say that to be provocative, but um, I, I'm a doc who went to medical school to address the things we talked about, and you see these challenges, and um, and our team is is um, a team of really experienced folks who love our patients and love our mission. Um, I think the hard part is that fee for service is something we've done uh, for 50 years, and it's created some bizarre incentives. And what this value-based model lets you do is take that step back, and and. The, the best solution to this, I think, will come. Um, I think where outside in helps is that, that um, you know, give credit to, to CMS and some of the others who are trying to lead the way and where right. this is going to happen. And, and so that's the outside in. Um, but I, I see this not only as better for patients, um, but far better for providers. And it's going to be bumpy. It's going to be bumpy as, as we get used to getting paid differently, to focusing on different things, to learning to do reporting. Working in teams is hard if you've not done it before. Right. Um, but I think those are all great things, and we're going to look back on this after we've made this transition and see patients get far better care, they spend far less money, they have a far better experience, um, practitioners feel like they have their practice back, that they're focusing on the right things, 
And that to me is so, I, I, I don't want to turn your question entirely. I think we've had great leadership mm -hmm. um, on the outside in perspective, but I also think this is fun because it, it returns uh, sort of the point of the game to, to the people on the inside, the folks who take care of patients and the patients themselves. Congratulations to you, Griffin, for, for really being at the, the leading edge of, of this new way of delivering care. And in many ways, it harkened back to the old ways of delivering care, but uh, you're finding a way to make it work financially and at scale. So wonderful having you here. Thank you so Pleasure. much for your time. My name is Kate Warnock. Stay with us. We're going to be up with another guest in just a moment.